became pretty unstable in Zimbabwe. Yeah, they ended up being a sort of a big uh, land reform pro program where you know a bunch of um, white and and black farmers got kicked off um, kicked off their farms, and uh, we were one of them, and and were pretty lucky in that my mum was a was a qualified teacher, so could move to move to Australia on her qualifications. Um, that seems to gloss over a, a sort of a little bit of, of the um, of the story, really. I mean, mm. what do you remember of that time and the upheaval and the challenges and what you had to go through? Pretty confusing as a as a kid um, growing up. How loving. Old were you? Uh, I was fourteen when we left. I was probably eleven. 11 or 12 when things started to um, sort of get a bit dicey. Um, yeah, you, you know, loving a country and then seeing your president on TV kind of saying, you know, white people are uh, the source of all our troubles. They need to leave uh, all this kind of stuff. And then we had a, a couple of, um, a couple of farmers in our, uh, in our sort of farming district were killed. Um, and yeah, I guess it, it, it does, it does rattle you as a, as a kid, um, being confronted with, with that stuff. I remember going to, um, one of these sort of family friends of ours were, um, the father and son were ambushed, um, one night and the, the dad, um, was shot and killed and the son managed to, uh, managed to survive. But as a kid, like putting our fingers, they were in their um, like ute in their truck, putting our fingers through like all these bullet holes in the side of the car. Um, yeah, thinking back, just pretty, pretty bizarre. Um, so that that certainly that certainly shaped, I guess, my my early years. And and arriving in Australia, I had a real, I guess it was almost a sense of guilt. Like a lot of most of my classmates, I'd left in Zimbabwe didn't have the opportunity to move to Australia. Things were, were still pretty bad. Um, and I guess I just use rugby as my outlet and, and way to deal with all the change and upheaval and trying to process all the stuff that, that had happened. Um, so yeah, it, it very much became my escape and I'm pretty, I'm pretty grateful for it. Like it, it, it was, it was how I made friends. It was, it was kind of uh, uh, my real focus through, through school. It is an extraordinary, it is an extraordinary story and, and very different to anyone else we've had on, on this show before. I, I just wondered, you know, as a family going through that, was it something that you discussed and you dealt with together? Was it something that as soon as you'd gone, you left it behind and, and focused on Australia I mean how, how did you get through that because it's, it's not just you and your your pride in Zimbabwe you, you know you've, you you come from a family with generations and, and deep roots in that country and I just wonder how I mean, did you literally up, up sticks and leave one night or was it you know six months in the planning we did move off the farm kind of in a bit of a hurry um, one afternoon but then we're able to go back and kind of pack up and and uh, moved into town for for about a year and then and then left i mean as a family do you, know, do, um, you, do you remember why you had to move one afternoon was it sort of word had reached you that if you didn't yeah we were kind dot, of just dot, told dot. to told to leave um uh, did, you, did someone said that you, you used to have like a security door as well that you had to sleep behind it because i what i'm trying to get is just a sense of how like on edge and dangerous it was for people because i think you know sometimes you know, you, you saying your neighbours got shot. Like it was, it was a, like a massive amount of fear, wasn't it? And a, a massive amount of uncertainty. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of that chronic fear and uncertainty that that I think um, wears you down, and leaves you with 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 issues. Um, <laughs> I guess as a, as a family, like you know, everyone's trying to deal with it as best they know how. You know, everyone's experiencing it differently we were certainly shielded from a lot of it by my folks. So, you know, the extent of it all, we, we didn't um, really know at the time. Yeah. I think my folks tried to talk about it a bit, but it was, yeah, it was, it was sort of a real time of upheaval and, and um, you know, looking back now, like, you know, like most um, 
immigrants, um, me and my brothers, I've got two younger brothers. We've kind of, yeah, we finished school year, got on with it. Um, we've got friends and are into, into life. It's, uh, it's the parents who kind of bear the, the cost of moving in their, what they would have been in their forties, um, with literally a few suitcases and not having, you know, now looking, looking at, um, the older years with, with no, savings or um superannuation or pension yes certainly great for the opportunities australia has given me and i guess i guess it is that that weird that weird tension of sort of sense of belonging like wh- where where is home like i um really love going back to zimbabwe and there's there's things about it that just feel um feel like home um but in some ways australia also feels feels like home now so it's it's kind of grappling with that and um yeah it'll 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 be good to spend a bit more time in zimbabwe this year but i I certainly see australia as home in the long term sorry alice i was just asking you know in terms of of dealing with stuff because it's like in on reflection obviously now you've matured you've done your 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 career you know, what point do you realise this this has affected me and and you know like your brothers? Because there's a quote from your your dad saying that the kids saw too much; it affected them greatly. Like you can now look back, but a lot of people don't know they've got any problems until they either hit rock bottom <laughs> or, or something else. Do you know what I mean? Like most people, are like I'm absolutely fine, and then and then suddenly someone goes, "Do you know what yours?" I think from what you're saying was obsessive, but how did you know? How did you feel? Well, one of my brothers um, had some pretty bad ptsd uh when we moved to australia so it was like a outpatient in a hospital for about a year and um yeah it took him it took him a quite a bit of time to kind of get back on his feet and and, um and get on with get on with things so i guess you kind of you you know it's there and 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 i guess the thing that the thing that uh, i don't think i've ever talked about this but the thing that got me to actually start to deal with it. I would have been in my early twenties and was just having heaps of nightmares, um, kind of kept waking me up. Um, and they were all to do with, with Zimbabwe and, and oh, it just went on and on. Uh, and it got to the point where my wife, Emma was like, listen, you gotta go and you gotta go and see someone talk about this stuff. Um, and I'm really grateful I did. Like, I think, yeah, we've all got, uh, we've all got stuff that I think just in actually talking to someone, um, that's the, that's the start of kind of letting it out and, and then making a bit of, a bit of peace with it, whatever it might be. As a culture, like we're not, we're not great at it. Um, you know, for men, you've got to kind of be this, you know, the warrior out there on the rugby field, not showing emotion. Um, and I think that's that's definitely changing, and it's a bit of a bit of a stereotype. But I think we've still got a long way to go for, uh, yeah, for men to be able to access their their feelings more and to be able to talk more openly about it with their with their mates or people who are close to them. Do you remember the gist of those dreams? I mean, was it real and and sort of flashbacks, or was it just a sort of a sensation? Oh, uh, it was kind of a, a combination of both, like some some real stuff with some just like recurring, just some recurring scary stuff. <laughs> yeah. I won't ask you to, to, to lie down and, and tell me your, your dog. <laughs> yeah, thoughts. please don't. Um, <laughs> what, what's extraordinary about this though, David, is, is given what you've been through, how your love for Zimbabwe remains. I mean, have you, have you worked that bit out? Oh man, I do, I do love the place, I guess. Um, I mean, there's so many great people there and there's something there's something really special about, um, I don't know, the, the place, like it's, 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 if you ever get a chance to visit, I, I would really recommend, um, spending some time there, uh, beautiful landscapes, really friendly people. And, you know, like, I think like, like a lot of places, if you judged a whole country based on its politicians, um, it's probably, Are you talking um, about Zimbabwe or somewhere or, well, in the UK? <laughs> well, most yeah. There's there's a there's a fair list of countries at the moment um, that that's true for. Beneath all the the shambles of of what happened, there's there's still so much goodness there. 